In this video I'm going to look at rigging characters. So uh, to start with, I've got a new scene, I am going to set the project to start with and uh, just go into the folder that I'm working to. I already have the workspace mail there so I don't have to create one. And then I'm going to look at the rigging menu set. And this changes here. So what I'm going to really look at today is a skeleton and skins. Um, you do have the other options here, the constraints and uh, the deformers, specifically blend shape if you're working with facial uh, animation as well. So to get this running, I'm going to go to General Editor's Content Browser. And within there we've got examples, modeling, sculpting base meshes. And I'm going to look at bipeds. So I'm going to take the human body just drag that into the scene and I can see there I have a base mesh of a character which I can start working with. So there's a few options here. Um, first one I'm going to do is quick rig. So I'm just going to save this so I can get back to that when I need to. <coughs> so from the skeleton option here we have human IK and quick rig. So to get this running fast, um, we can have no character in the scene. Um, literally, if I press auto rig, I will get a rig set up on this character with little options um, that I'm working to. Now this will actually be quite useful when you're just testing your model. Um, and I can see there that the, the knees are bending in roughly the right place. Um, and I can also see that the elbows are in the wrong place. Um, so we can uh, we can work on fixing that, but we do have these options in there already. Oh, I've broken that. Um, and we can see how that isn't perfect, but we do have a, a rigged character that we can start working with. So <coughs> I'm going to undo those. So the quick rig with one click isn't isn't ideal for this one. So if I revert back to the file I had already, and if I do step by step, so that's the next thing I can do. So I can add a character, quick rig character. I can add the geometry I'm using, and you can add more than one mesh in there. And then I can create guides. So what will happen with that is it will put in the markers that it thinks are in the right place. And as we found earlier, the elbow was in the wrong place, so it's made that same mistake again looking at the mesh. So I'm just going to raise that up to be in the elbow area. And now if I want to send that, match that on the other side, I can use that mirroring option there. I'm also going to slightly raise the shoulder. So it's in the ball of the joint there, and I'm doing the opposite side now. So that will work there. The knee, just going to bring up slightly, slightly forward, and mirror that across. Um, so it's fairly good. Um, the neck and the head, I'm going to leave as is. <coughs> so we're going down the list here um, to create the skeleton. I've got options here, skeleton and control rig. So in this instance, I'm going to create that. Um, and this will match a skeleton to the, the shapes that I'm working with. Now this isn't bound, so I can see that that skeleton moves on its own um, and doesn't bring the, the mesh with it. But the skinning method is what we're going to use to actually attach the mesh to that and create a relationship there. So now when I start working, I can start moving this character in a, in a way that actually functions quite nicely. Um, I'll just check the arms. Sometimes the arms pull the, um, the rib cage out, um, but that one's not too bad. Um, <clears throat> so that is a very quick, effective way of rigging a character. It was in a single mesh. Um, so I can just save that now 
and and I'll just call that quick rig step by step so I know what that was that was um, and you can start animating that as you need to if there is any refinement you need to do that you can use the other techniques that I'll show you um, from the skinning menu here so you can do paint skin weights and I'll just show you that quickly now so you've got paint skin weights and you should have the uh, interactive bind tool you normally have a paint skin weights tool but you may get that from the options so I'll just bring paint skin weights um, and with this you have to select the mesh that you're working with so I can see that there and from this I can see the black and white elements are, which are defining where a particular joint will be having an influence and it's best to bring up the tool settings so I'll double click that icon there um, and I'll dock that in the side here um, and you can go through each of the areas that you may be working to now if there is a, a problem with one of the um, areas you're working on you can actually just paint this black and white image out so you've got to replace select the geometry paint um, and whether you are adding or taking away is really working with this value here so I'm going to bring that down to 50% and make this zero so if you wanted to stop um, this upper left leg having an influence on this area here um, we can we can do that quite quickly um, the brush shape I'm just going to work out where the brush size is um, opacity value so I normally press B on the keyboard if I press B on the keyboard here I can actually make that brush bigger um, and that makes it slightly larger and I can just want to see where that is in here here you go stroke radius um, so if I raise that slightly I'm going to get a bigger brush <coughs> and so if I want to take away that influence I can paint that area and you can go for each of the joints individually and make that work so it's really how you refine it if there are any odd parts of your um, body that seem to come together quite quickly but the paint skin weights tool is a way of adapting and improving on any rigging that you've done uh, with the skinning aspect of that.